episode of the podcast, we talk about one of the most important books that I read in 2020, and I'm interviewing the author. <laughs> the author. <laughs> the author. Here, inside, we cover different video types that will immediately impact sales and closing rates for your clients, the importance of micro stories, and a ninja tactic for knowing exactly what your clients need for a video that they can't say no to. What's up, friend? I'm Ryan Coral from Studio Sherpas, and this is the Grow Your Video Business Podcast, where I talk about how to grow your video business without burning out. We cover how to get more clients, be more productive without sacrificing creativity and how to get paid what you're worth as a filmmaker or studio owner. If this sounds like you, you're in the right place. I hope, I sincerely hope that your 2022 is getting off to an amazing start. And if you want help getting focus in your videography business, maybe you need some fresh ideas for sales and marketing, or you're just looking to get really, really serious and really focused with the business part of your business. If that's you, I wanna invite you to the five-day Grow Your Video Business Challenge that I'm hosting in just a few days. The challenge is completely free, and we've done the challenge a couple of times before. I've helped hundreds of people uh, in the past to get re-excited and re-engaged with their video business uh, to help them be able to charge more, make more, like keep more of the money, uh, and enjoy it all more. Uh, you can sign up free to the five-day Grow Your Video Business Challenge at studiosherpas.com slash challenge. Again, we're going live in a few days, and I would love to see you inside. With that, we've got an amazing show packed with lots of really good actionable nuggets for you. So without further ado, without further delay, ado, delay, here we go. What's up, friends? Hey, I'm super excited about this episode today. I've got Tyler Lassard, who is the, <laughs> he's a dancer. Um, he's the VP of, oh my gosh. He's I, the VP of. <laughs> I'm, I'm also excited about this. In case you didn't know, for those of you just listening, not watching right now, you're Yeah, you need to watch. Dance wow. I'm, I'm uh, that was surprising. Tyler didn't tell me who's going to bust some moves there. Uh, Tyler is the VP of marketing, VP marketing and chief video strategist at Vidyard, which I'm sure a lot of you have heard about, co-author of The Visual Sale, this book right here, bada boom, bada bing. Uh, he's host of the annual Video and Business Awards and frequent content producer for all things video in marketing and sales. Tyler, welcome to the show, cue the dancing now. Ryan, I, I that's <laughs> it, that's all I've got uh, for dance moves. But thankfully, I got a couple more things to be able to talk about with respect to video here during this oh. conversation. So first of all, thanks for having me. I'm super excited to be here to talk about the topic, which is obviously near and dear to my heart. Uh, I've been at Vidyard for over eight years. Can you believe it? Oh my gosh, it's like, wow. It's a lifetime, my friend. Uh, and I came into Vidyard with no experience in the world of video. Oh my so gosh. I faked it until I made it. I <laughs> haven't quite made it yet, but I got a book out, so that's something. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, yeah, excited to chat here, man. Thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely. So uh, this, the book, The Visual Sale was recommended by one of our faithful Studio Sherpas and podcast listeners. Uh, Ita actually was was the one that said, hey man, I got this book and I've underlined every line <laughs> in the whole book. I'm like, well, that doesn't help. Um, but he said, it's awesome. So I picked it up, uh, had it shipped to me, I think the next day. And I started going through it and I was like, oh my gosh, like this is really good. You are on to something here, my friend. So number one, congrats on creating something that really is resonating with me and I know is resonating with my tribe of videographers. And I think I think this conversation is just gonna be very helpful for us to understand yeah. better the power of video and how we should be using it, maybe how we've been using it that, that could be a little bit more effective. Uh, so the pressure's on for you to deliver incredibly high value today. <laughs> <laughs> well, good thing I wrote a book on the topic. So a few hey. things are top of mind for me. Um, but one of the things I will note before we hop into the conversation for all of you listening or watching is that um, I come at this topic not as a video producer myself, but as somebody who lives in the world of marketing and sales. And so the, the interesting thing as we approached this book 
was that focus on talking to lots of different businesses who are using video, right? Not typically talking to their videographers, but talking to right. the folks in the digital marketing team, on the sales team, um, you know, marketing leaders to understand where do they really get value from video and how is it impacting their business? So, mm -hmm. you know, when you go out and you think about, you know, the book, for example, is, is a great thing for all of us to read, but it's also a really great thing to give to your clients to tell them, read this book because it's going to give you 20 new yeah. ideas for the kinds of videos we need to be doing together. And that's that was really part of the inspiration for it. Yeah, I love I love that you said that we are. Uh, so we do a workshop, a planning workshop when when a client says, hey, here's this video that we want to do. And so we do this two hour workshop with them. They, they book the workshop and typically we don't actually do the workshop until, you know, two to four weeks after that time. And what I want to start doing is gifting them uh, things. And uh, this book is one of the things I was like, man, we need to just like give this to people. I mean, we're going to talk about these sort of things, but to be able to give that to them for their eyes to be open and say like, wow, um, because they might have in mind this one video. And that's typically what happens is yeah. a client has one video that they want to do. So they call us, hey, can you produce this video? And what I would love to always do, like in those conversations as I'm digging in and trying to figure out like what's their what's the pain point here what what are they trying to solve and uh you know sometimes there's a couple of other videos or things that they need um so the fact that you know you're going to do some selling for me uh with this book thank you again i'm a giver what can i say that's what i'm here <laughs> yeah, for. yeah that's right uh, yeah <laughs> what would you say what what has been one of the biggest surprises uh the book came out last year is that right yes yeah. Yeah. So, you know, having written the book, what, what would you say? What's one of the biggest surprises that you've seen in the past year as people are engaging with the book, um, but also the way that people are doing business has changed, yeah. you know, in the last year and a half or so. Like, so what what are you seeing? What are you hearing? Yeah. Well, what was really interesting when we wrote the book, it was in twenty. Gotta get my date straight now. Twenty nineteen, and yeah. we had written most of the book before the pandemic actually hit. If anybody out there can remember, there was a pre-pandemic time in our lives. Hard to remember. I know, right? But we had, <laughs> we had written the majority of this book and were uh, you know, close to wrapping it up when the pandemic hit. And we, we, we pressed our own you know, pause button, if you will. And uh, we, we said, well, let's, let's see what's going on here before we, we finish this up. And a few months later, we reconvened on it and we said, well, this is really interesting because mm -hmm. there's actually this new forcing function for different ways to be using video that have been brought on by this virtual world that we're all now yeah. living in. So we actually had an opportunity to go back to update some sections of the book to add a little bit more um, in context of this new virtual world that we're in. And you know what has transpired since then has actually been just as if not even more interesting because over the last 18 months, what's really neat that's happened is that video has become so democratized within business that we no longer seem to have to have these like, well, like why video or like, should there be a camera mm -hmm. somewhere, right? We're, we're kind of getting past that now. And a, a big, initially a big part of the book was like convincing people like why video should be a part of the yeah. strategy. But now we all have cameras that we're looking into, you know, often at least once or more per day, um, you know, right down to our sales reps and our internal teams mm -hmm. uh, at, at businesses. And so this democratization has kind of been happening. Everybody is getting somewhat comfortable on camera because they're on Zoom calls all the time and so on. Yeah. But also the expectations for what video needs to be have changed. Like we're again, we're all on camera on a daily basis, looking into people's messy bedrooms and that's suddenly fine, right? Which it wasn't five years ago. Right. And we're all feeling good about this. Like, hey, this is kind of cool that we can be authentic. We can be transparent. We can be genuine. And so that sort of happened in the market at the same time. And so all these forces came together where we're like, this is actually really cool because video doesn't just have to be this once a year, highly produced thing. Um, we need to get into this rhythm now where video is just the way you're communicating your messages and audiences expectations are fine with that. We don't need drone footage in everything we do. So now all of a sudden, instead of talking about making three videos a year, companies are talking about making hundreds of videos, micro videos that are all yeah. in a very different style. So it's been uh, it's been a really interesting year for that. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, I love it. I and and I'm totally on the same page. Uh, you know, there's some. I, I'm I'm a part of one networking group, and I was at a meeting, and uh, I said, "Hey, I have this idea for this workshop where I want to kind of teach people how to, how to use you know different pieces of equipment." And somebody did raise their hand, and they're like, "I think you should do a workshop on like you know why video is important." And I'm like, "I'm just like, no, 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 no. like that's like if we're beyond. We are past why video is important because exactly what you just said. But seriously, that happened." I was like, oh my gosh, like, I don't know if that person has an email address, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the biggest uh, challenges, you know, I was telling you before we started 17 years ago when I got into video is because I really wanted to tell people's stories. Like I just had this passion. I had been impacted by some amazing videos that our church had produced of like people's like life transformation yeah. stories. And I would watch, you know, week after week, these stories, you know, five to 10 minute long videos and, you know, old person, little person, you know, just all, all sorts of individuals. And I'm like weeping, like after all these, and I'm like, this is an incredibly powerful medium. And I want to like be a part of like creating something that gets people to lean in and, and like changes the trajectory of, of some people's lives. I think that would be so cool. So that's kind of like how we built this brand to say like, hey, your story matters. Tell studios, tell your story. That's 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 where all of that kind of comes from. As I'm going through the book, the visual sale, I'm I'm uh, I don't want to say guilty as charged, but there is this thing as we want to help businesses. You know, we work with all these different businesses. We want to we want them to grow. We want them to experience success. So then. Uh, they come back and, you know, do more videos with us because it's way easier to work with somebody, you know, often somebody that we like to work than it is to try to find new clients. One of the lines in the book says, address what buyers really want to know and trust will always follow. Mm. And that's what I feel like these brand stories or these about us films, that's what they've been able to do. They, they really, you know, they, they paint this picture of like this authentic person, this, this person who started this business, you know, forever ago, why they do it, why, what do they care about? And in doing that, that differentiates them from their competitor. And then they can, you know, people that are watching can right. say like, you know what, I really like what this person stands for and, and they're pricing it, you know, everything's kind of the same. So this is who we want to work with. So while I still think that's incredibly important yeah. and the pieces that we create are, are powerful and they're beautiful, what I'm realizing is that if we can help turn the needle uh, with some businesses, because it's it's hard to say like, well, I watched that video. It's just harder to measure, you know, with like video metrics and things on a on a website. There's it's harder to put calls to action on an about us piece. Like sometimes it just feels like a little like salesy or sleazy when really the point is to communicate like yeah. personality. So in in positioning, you know, the way that you guys you you have these six videos that you say like if you do these six videos, like this can impact your sales and marketing. It's really opening my eyes to say like, wow, like yeah. we could help companies in this way. And if they get some traction and see some results with the videos that can make an impact in their dollars or their signups or their email list or whatever, then maybe they'll start to believe, they'll start to trust that, yeah, we probably do need something like a culture piece or this about us piece. Yeah. What are your thoughts? I just talked for like 23 minutes. Well, <laughs> and I'm glad you did. Because there was like there there was so much goodness in that. I mean, the one um, you, you talked about some of the reasons why you get so passionate about video and the storytelling and like bringing real people's you know perspectives, um, things that strike up emotion, um, things that create this narrative that literally draws people in and makes them you know kind of even inch closer to their screen. And the thing is, those kinds of little stories are everywhere in business. Yeah. And, you know, we often, again, as, as marketers and sales teams and business leaders, we're guilty many times of thinking, oh, there's like this one big are about us story. That's the story, right? Mm, yeah. um, your product, your product has a story. Your service has a story. All of your customers have their stories. Mm. Um, when you're trying to educate your audience, right? Traditionally, you've probably written some blog posts or some articles, Right. Well, there's a story in there that can come to life in more meaningful ways in a video. Now, are all of these little videos 
going to, you know, be tear jerkers or are they going to be, you know, make somebody laugh out loud? No, not necessarily. Right. They don't always have to have these huge emotional plays or be, you know, all things to all people. But all of these different communications that we do are micro stories that we can bring to life in better ways through video. And that goes from how we talk about our products on our website, in our one-to-ones with our, our customers or, or, or prospects. Again, how we bring our customer stories to life, how our sales reps explain answers to commonly asked questions, right? Um, there's all these things within business that we could bring to life through video. And we haven't traditionally for a few different reasons, one of which was that simply video wasn't as accessible or attainable for businesses, right? right? We'd say like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. If I'm going to make a video of my sales reps answering the top five questions that they know their customer is going to ask, right? If I make that video and I'm going to make three customer videos and I'm going to do this, then they're like, whoa, 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 we're talking like a $500,000 budget, right? And you're like, <laughs> No, 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 no. This is like we're in 2020. We're about to be in 2022 here, folks. That's not the way to think about it, right? There's ways to create this content now that is much more approachable, much more attainable. And that's when the ROI conversations start to change. Because when you were talking about, oh, well, if I'm going to make this video I, and, and I can't measure it, it's hard to justify it. And that's yeah. true when you've got a $50,000 price tag on a video, right? right. I, I agree. Like as a marketer myself, if I'm going to yeah. spend a huge amount of money on a piece of content, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure I've got a pretty good way to measure it and get the value out of it. Yeah. But if I change my mindset and I go, okay, a video is a better way to communicate this idea over here. And if I can spend $5,000 telling an amazing story about my product, and that's a video that's gonna be used by my sales reps. It's gonna be used on this webpage. It's gonna be, it's be like, it's a no brainer at that point where yeah. I'm like, okay, I can see how this is going to add value to the conversation and is gonna change it. And if you're not telling me it's going to cost $50,000 to make that video, it's a different conversation altogether. And that's what we need to yeah. get in the mindset of. Um, and I and I worry a bit for the audience here who are the producers going, wait a minute, Tyler, shut up. I need to charge my customer $50,000. <laughs> um, uh, so, you know, for there is a time and place for those larger productions. Don't get me wrong. But more and more, I think all of you have this opportunity to say, hey, instead of us doing two you know, large projects per year, I can become your video producer of record and let's make 10 videos a month and each of them are going to be more micro content, but let's get into a rhythm of it where we're consistently creating together and knocking down all these different places where we could tell better stories through video, but not worry about everyone being a massive production. Let's start figuring out how to make video a way for you to communicate your messages rather than just something for these big campaigns or these two web pages. Yeah, I think that's, there's a lot of brilliance in that. The the I think the fear in a lot of filmmakers is that, well, the bigger the budget, the more cool stuff that we can do, yeah. you know, the more beautiful image imagery we can get, or the more time we can spend finding the stories. And, you know, there's, there are all those production elements that just cost a stinking ton of money. Yeah. But for the majority, I would say of our audience, it's like, well, I, I love this work so much. I want to do it all the time. So, um, finding, uh, yeah. you know, a couple of clients that would say, Hey, we would love for you to produce videos for us throughout the year, you know, to find two or three clients instead of like having to find, you know, 20 or 30 clients throughout the entire year, you're going to save a ton of time and you're going to build like, uh, essentially become a part of those teams yeah. an extension of those teams and really get to understand them and, uh, create stuff but feel like you're a part of something bigger than you. And uh, and I think the thing that it forces us to do as producers is say like, okay, if it's not gonna be a $50,000 piece, like what can we do for 5,000 mm -hmm. or for 10,000? Like what what can, what can don't we need to put in here? Uh, what, what are some things that, yeah, that's a nice to have, but you know, at the end of the day, the content here is really what we're after. And you know, at, at some point as a producer, like I could maybe see or know the difference, but everybody else in the world that's gonna watch or experience this video, it's just kind of like, wait, what? You, you hired sound design for that? Why did you, like, I don't, I can't tell a right. different, and, and now I'm <laughs> offending people. People, but uh, there, there is this like law of diminishing returns in the work that we do. So working harder to find a couple of like consistent retainer clients, uh, that is the reward for that would be massive. Yeah. And 
mo- most all of us don't like selling, right? It's yeah. like, well, I just want people to hire us because of the quality of our work and we make sweet videos. Well, what if you, you really could spend the majority of your time not selling yeah. and creating content? I mean, that that would be really cool. <laughs> well, and, and you know what, 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 what this starts to do as well is it feeds more opportunities for those bigger productions that are the things you may love the most doing because yeah. what, what we're doing here is we, we talk about this in the book is this notion of we're, we're, we're creating a culture of video within businesses, right? And once that culture gets established where people get excited across the business to be doing more videos as opposed to afraid because it's going to be some big, crazy, you know, frightening thing, that's when things really change, right? When you go, okay, great. Now, like everybody's part of the process. They've like seen all these little videos we're doing. They love it. They're like, I'm so glad that our, you know, even internally, right? Like, I'm so glad that our our company like town hall message is now this great video of our CEO instead of some crappy email that nobody reads. And all of a sudden now the CEO is like, hey, this is cool. People like, they're liking my videos. They're like, when are we doing that next big holiday video? And when's that next big campaign coming? It just starts to get everybody on board with it as it becomes more and more pervasive in how they, uh, in how companies uh, deliver their messages. And that then fuels and takes away some of that fear of like, okay, we are going to do this bigger production over here. Now people start asking less questions about like, well, where's the ROI and can we track this? Right. They're like, of course we should do that video. All these other videos are great. They're working really well. I feel, you know, it's the right thing to be doing. I can tell the difference when I watch a video about our product and read a bunch of bullet points. I'm on the video train. Let's keep doing these other things. So I think that's where all of us can kind of work together to get businesses to get the industry to where people just, you know, we, we, we knock down these barriers of like, oh, how do we do another video? It's like, no, no, no. Mm-hmm. It's just part mm-hmm. of the way we do things now. We know it. We're all a part of it. And uh, and then that opens up just bigger and better things for all of us. Yeah, I know in doing sales, the more videos that I have to share with our clients to kind of talk about our process or to show case studies or testimonials about with people that we've worked with, like the more like tools I have in my tool belt. Is that how you say that? Tools? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Batarangs in your bat belt or whatever. Yeah. yeah. All those things. Uh, the, the more confident that I feel, the more like, I, I, you know, as I'm reading a client and trying to understand what they need, I'm like, oh, I've got a video that would be really helpful for, for them. So I know that as a salesperson, if if there, there are these videos that that person can use, that's where trust begins to be built, right? Some people are gonna see those videos and be like, eh, not for me, I, you know, we're gonna go somewhere else. I don't like the personality, I don't like the product, the service, whatever, and that's good, right? There is goodness in that, that if you're able to explain what you do and why you do it, and people are like, nope, not for me, great. The, well, I'm just gonna talk to the person that is interested, because I know people are interested, because this, we have this business that works, and so as you're doing that, you're creating content, producing these videos, you're building trust, right? Yep. You, you know, you're kind of flexing that muscle of like, well, what is this, what is this whole video thing? Okay, like this is working. So then, like you're saying, when it comes time to do that bigger brand piece or a piece that like, you know, it's just like the recap of the whole year, whatever whatever yep. that thing is, it's, it, the trust has already been built with your audience. So it's not, you know, that the people in charge of the budget aren't saying like, yeah, I'm not sure we should do it. It's like, no, no, like this is, this is who we are. Like yeah. this is an extension of us. We've already built the trust. We've established this. So let's just continue because this is what we're about. Yeah. 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 No, I, I think you're, you're, you're spot on. And what, you know, a lot of businesses, again, I think what they also underestimate is where and how and in which departments video can be used mm. effectively. Yeah. Um, which is, again, is something we we talk a lot about in the book and we, we go through the whole kind of customer life cycle for external video, you know, everything from, you know, your website to other types of marketing campaigns, promos, advertisements right into, again, if you're working with businesses that are, you know, that have sales teams, guess what those sales reps are doing all day long? They're communicating messages, trying to share information. Um, They're trying to reach prospects and videos can be a great way to do that. They probably have customer service teams who are answering the same damn question over and over again, (laughs) or they're sending somebody off to a written knowledge base article that is like so hard to understand. And like, boom, there's like 30 videos that they should be making today that are really clear and crisp how to's, right? 
Um, and, and you can go on, right? Internal communications, right? With, with distributed workforces, right? Like what's, what is their strategy for creating that rapport and camaraderie and familiarity amongst their people and between their leadership team and their employees? Are their executives still sending out crappy old monthly updates to the company that frankly, nobody's probably reading or if they are, right? Like how connected do they feel? Like, do they really even know that person? And I've seen countless times where like businesses are, yeah, all of a sudden we decided to start to make these not only videos of our executives, but we had started having some fun with it. Like the first video they were like, you know, they were in their suit and tie, they were sitting in front of the fireplace (laughs) and like we tracked the engagement metrics and like a lot of people clicked and then they fell off after about two minutes. And then the next one, they're like in their backyard, they're wearing a t-shirt and all of a sudden people started watching. And then in the third one, they were wearing a cowboy hat for no good reason at all. And the engagement was through the roof, right? And then the Halloween version, they were dressed up in a Halloween costume. And oh my goodness, people watched it twice because they loved it so much. Mm-hmm. And it's like all these little things where you're like, oh yeah, like I've only been talking to the brand person about this one yeah. video all along. Yeah. There's all these other places where my skills as a video production a producer or a production team can be applied to this business that they're probably not even thinking about today. Yeah. Oh man, that's brilliant. I love that. So you go through six different videos that, you know, really for a sales and marketing team, uh, I mean, the title of the chapter is like six videos that will immediately impact sales and closing rates. Right. So that's a very attractive title. Uh, if you're in sales or marketing, it's like, okay, like w- I, I couldn't read those chapters fast enough. Right. Um, w- just briefly uh, paint paint a picture of what those look like. Yeah. And the, um, you know, for the benefit of, of all of you out there, the book is broken up into effectively kind of two main chunks. And then uh, there's a third section on creating the culture of video. And the first chunk, we really focus in on a sales team mindset and saying, how can sales teams be equipped with video um, or supported to do video themselves as well. And then the second big chunk focuses on, you know, marketing and um, more traditional kind of one to many content. Um, In the sales case, there are all these different ideas that again, most people aren't even thinking about. Um, And and we talk about things like the selling six and and, and types of videos. Um, And so those are, those are very much through that lens. And there's a few in there that are pretty simple ideas, right? One of them uh, we refer to as the 80% video which is the idea of most sales reps, um, when they're having an initial conversation with a prospect, they'll get asked the same questions over and over again, right? Every prospect, there's probably five or six questions that they know they're gonna get every time, right? It's different for every team, but it's probably things related to, well, how does this thing work? Or does this really do this? Or why does your pricing work? What are the levers on that? How do you compare to this competitor? whatever they happen to be. Anyway, the idea with the 80% video is that you can create one video that proactively answers probably those those questions that you get 80% of the time. And you can have that one video that's ready to go that you can proactively send to a prospect early on. And it can do, it does a few things, right? Like this is just one example, but that in and of itself does a whole bunch of things where you're early on and as a sales rep, they go, hey, Mr. Prospect, Miss Prospect, um, I would love for you to watch this six minute video. I know it's six minutes, seems so long, but it is going to answer five of the questions that you're probably gonna have as we start to work together. And if, if you could watch it before our call on Friday, yeah. that would be really helpful because then we don't have to spend that call talking about these things. We can focus that on more important topics, right? And you send that video over and they click the play button. And sure enough, it answers these questions. Some of them are questions that may feel a little controversial, like what is your pricing, right? And a lot of sales teams will be like, I don't wanna talk about pricing up front." But if you can get ahead of that and go, our pricing, we're gonna talk about this. However, our levers are things like this. And mm, yeah, you know, we typically yeah. end up somewhere in the this to this range, which I understand is a big range, but there are a number of different factors that fall into that, which we'll talk about in our calls and so on and so on. So anyways, you end up both communicating your ideas very clearly, but you also create that sense of trust early on because you're transparently talking about this information. And better yet, if it's a real salesperson from your team in that video, because now they're also getting to know that person even before they have this call. 
And now that's an asset that gets used over and over again. That's just one example, the 80% video. There's a number of others like simple, like a bio video in your email signature or something you can use on your LinkedIn profile and other cases to get people to get to know you. Um, there are things like the pricing video where you can clearly talk about a pretty complex topic, but do it in a way where, again, you can have a concrete resource to go to and say, Here's a video that explains it all, right? It's a little complicated, but this will help you clearly understand it. And by the way, there's visuals as part of it to help you comprehend what we're talking about. So there's a few others. I won't spoil them all because of course you got to go buy the book to find out the other three. <laughs> um, but those are just a few examples. The pricing video, the 80% video, the bio video. Um, and then there's all sorts of other things we talk about through the rest of the marketing and sales process. I, I love the, the 80%, you know, Typically, when somebody's calling for video production, they they they've either been referred to us or they're finding us, you know, organically or whatever. And if they're finding us organically, they're probably looking at one or two other companies. Mm -hmm. And so, if I can quickly get in their hands, you know, here's our FAQs. These are the questions that were like, I'm I'm ahead of the game here, right? I've already like exceeded probably expectations oh, that they yeah. had like, Oh wow. Like, you know, and, and he's even talking about pricing and the, the, the levers. I like, I really like that. How, uh, because when I, whenever I'm talking to somebody about video pricing, it's like, well, okay. You know, it depends on 8 million variables, <laughs> but like some of the biggest variables are like, how long are we shooting for? Is it a one day shoot? Is it multiple days? Is it a half day? And then like how big or small is our crew? Like those are going to impact a lot of things, you know, when it comes to pricing. So to be able to, to say that, oh yeah, those are a couple of levers. Yeah. Now I, I've got something for my own tool. Well, and when you explain yeah. those things today, for example, right? Like when you don't have videos to send over, you're probably, again, you're probably actually spending a lot of time pulling together information or writing it out or having a yeah. conversation. And it's a bunch of different things, right? You're talking about, so when it comes to our pricing, okay, I got to talk about some of these different levers and then this is how you're going to get to here. And then, oh, here's, an, here's some examples of like a like low, medium, high kind of output for what you might get. And like, there's all these things that go with it. And if you step back and think, geez, if I were to use my own storytelling capabilities and visual creative um, abilities, what would my video of like my pricing look like? Like, let's do that. Let's produce it as a team. Because there are like some of those you're like, and this sort of thing is going to get you something that's probably going to look a little bit like this, right? And it cuts to an example of a video and then it's, but if you're interested in something that's going to look a little bit more like this, doo -doo 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 -doo, that's where we're going to bring in a second crew. We're going to have to get the drones out, you know, this or that, and that's what's going to bring us up. But you can see how the end product is going to differ, right? Like you could actually you know, kind of tell your own story. And, and I bet you feel really good once you've got that video nailed because you're like, oh, thank goodness. Now for the next year, I can just send this video over. I don't have to see it over and over again. <laughs> and then you oh, can man, make that so same video ideas. for their sales team, right? You send that to them and you're right. like, wouldn't it be great if your sales team had one like this too? Right. And they're like, of course we should. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's always inception. Whenever we come up with a good idea for like our own uh, or something that we think that other people should have, it's like, well, let's let's create it for ourselves. Right. Then we get to use that as one of our tools, and then we get to say, <laughs> hey, you should have this same I kind of video. I love your customer like, testimonial video, and you're like, yeah, <laughs> you should have one like that too, because yours <laughs> suck. Actually, you don't even have any. Right. Um, so we can do that for you too. It, totally, absolutely, good, uh, perfect mindset. So I'm curious, Tyler, if you, let's say Vidyard had no sales and market, like you guys had no videos to promote what you're doing and you need customers, right? What is, and, and you were just, you were given a budget to say, okay, you can only do one video, Ooh. right? It can be a bio video. It could be a selfie video, whatever. Like what is the the first and most important video that you're going to do that, that would ideally get you your first, you know, hundred customers. I'm probably going to do a really well thought out and I'm doing air quotes here, explainer video for our kind of main category offering. And the reason I'm going to do that is it doesn't always end up being the like most interesting or emotional or, you know, kind of epic production, but a really great explainer video. Uh, we all know it goes such a long way to just help people comprehend and understand what you do, but it's also something 
that can get used in so many different ways, right? Of course, it becomes the hero on my website. So if people come here, it's like, just click play and you will understand kind of what we do. Uh, but it's also then something that the sales reps are going to use in their communications with customers, in their prospecting. Um, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna, it's gonna be, you know, running on our screen at a booth, at an event, those sorts of things. So I would start there to clearly articulate and understand our message. Um, and then there's a bunch of other things I would do after that. I'd probably spend less on it in my budget and so I can do some other things too. <laughs> mm, yes. Right. Right. Uh, I like that. Yeah, that's really good. It's, it's, um, I like just trying to think like, okay, like if, if we could only do one, what, yeah. what is that? And <laughs> for me, it just comes down to like, Oh, like I love our story, but like, is that gonna get people to like lean in yeah. and say like, it's oh, hard. I mean, yeah. every business is obviously going to be a little bit different depending on where their gaps are or where they think their most impactful message is. Like in some cases, the best place to start might actually be an amazing customer story. Like that might end mm -hmm. up, like, it depends right. on the business that you're in. Right. But that's, yeah. you know, that is where, again, we need to like push our clients for all of us in the production world. Um, we need to push our clients on thinking about those ideas. Like it's not what video do you want to do next? It's where are you facing the biggest challenges in your marketing and sales process? Is it generating new leads? Is it you've got a whole bunch of leads, but you're struggling to convert them? Is it your sales team is really inefficient and are having problems, again, converting people through stages of the pipeline? Is it internal communications and your employees don't know what the hell's going on, right? We can now start to reframe the conversation around, let's figure out where your business problems are and then how a video could help solve that. And I think that's always where I start when I'm working with businesses is like, let's get to the heart of kind of where we could have an impact with video and then let's work, work from there as opposed to the other way around of what video do you want to make? Okay, cool. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. Again, that's, that's one of our challenges is by the time people call us, typically yeah. they have a video in mind, right? They, they say like, we want to do the explainer. We want to do a hero video when, when really I'm like, uh, oh, you know, as I'm asking questions, I'm like, man, they don't have this and this. And that, that video is not really going to help if they don't have these other things mm -hmm. already figured out. So we've kind of seen the writing on the wall and say like, if we come alongside and allow people to hire us as a consultant, as a video strategist to just say like, hey, instead of like, you know, maybe you have a video that you want to do or right. we just go to market with, we're not going to wait for people to call us when they're ready to do video. We're going to go out and say, hey, we'd love for you to hire us and we're going to come alongside your current marketing strategy and any campaigns that you, you want to do yeah. and we're going to help you figure out what videos might be most helpful along your customer journey that we've done that and that has been really successful. Yeah. I mean, we had one client that just had, they had done a couple of videos with us. We did this session, this workshop with them. And then, you know, they've become one of our biggest clients doing videos throughout the year and year over year because we, we worked on strategy and said like, th this is the smart way to approach this yeah. versus like us just being more in reactionary mode, helping serve them when they have a product or service that doesn't relate to video. It has nothing to do with video. They need video to help grow their business. So why should they know exactly what video is going to help them do that? They've seen yeah. their competition or they've seen a video that they're like, ah, oh, that, well, that's pretty cool. Like maybe we should have that. We're the ones that are in the trenches working with, you know, all these different companies yeah. and in studying and trying to understand marketing and sales and how it works and in how video different videos do different things. And so we should be the ones that are are being hired, quite frankly, to come alongside these these companies to say, you know, you should if that's what you're your campaign is, or this is what your goal is, this kind of video or these three videos are ones that you should really consider yeah. as you guys get ready to do. And you don't have to hire us to do yeah. it, right? I'm just here as your consultant, your yeah. your guide. Um, but, you know, chances are people are going to hire me if I'm the one that's kind of guiding them along the way. Yeah. Well, and, and I think realistically, most of us are going to get that first job with a customer as a, okay, I've got a video, I'm looking for a production agency, right. can you do this totally. for me, right? But to your point, that's, um, you know, that that's always the great entry point. But if after that project wraps up, and then, you know, maybe you've got another one in the wings, but I think, again, that is the opportunity to go back and say, this was a great project, really enjoyed working with your team. Um, you know, have you thought about other places where video might be able to help solve some problems or, or tell a great story? And, you know, again, to your point, they're, you know, folks listening here, some of some of you maybe 
wanting to get into that and do a lot more actual like consulting and creative planning and, and you know, be locked with it with the marketing team. Others, maybe not quite as much. Um, but again, those are great cases where at the very least, you should be sharing your portfolio of other work you've done to see if it sparks ideas with them of like, oh, I love what you did here. You know, so that's a good starting point. But then, you know, again, you can go even further than that and start to have some of these conversations. Um, and actually, again, this is why I'm like, I'm so glad we put all this stuff from our brains in that book, because that's actually a really good framework to to think from. Um, there's so much that you can grab from that of go like, oh, wow, there's like 50 ideas for different videos in here. Yeah. But again, you can also do things like, again, encourage customers to 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 think about those and, um, you know, take some ideas from it and say, yeah, like, where do you have some potential problems? Where do you have some challenges? I can help you honestly think about where could a video or where could storytelling or where could a narrative have a big impact? So if you tell me five different areas where you're trying to improve, I can probably give you a good sense for this is the one where I think video could help the most because the problem is it's it's missing the story or yeah. the idea is complicated and it needs to be visually represented and 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 shown like you can lean on those powers of video to go this is the one where video could really shine that's the next one you should do so I love that idea. And I think so many teams out there need that help. They don't know they need it is the problem. They're not asking for it, right. but, uh, right. but they right. do need it. Yeah. Yeah. And one other thought there too, because like most, most of us just don't like selling. Like it's not our natural inclination to be like knocking on somebody's door. Like, Hey, like here's a video I think you should do. But what we've done is we've reached out to clients, you know, a month or so after we gave them their finished video and just checked in. Yeah. Like, how's the video going? Because, 80% of the time, it's like, well, we haven't, you know, we haven't posted it yet. Or, um, yeah, we posted it. We've got, you know, 12 views. So distribution and optimization and really trying to help people understand like some ways that they should, you know, where they should put it, how they should frame mm -hmm. it, like all of those things, like that kind of comes along size. So you can add value at no cost and just say like, well, Hey, have you thought about this? Or have yeah. you, you know, considered this creating a downloadable PDF or a mini video course as a production company and offering that to our clients to say like, here's yeah. how you can get more eyeballs or better conversion rates or whatever with the video that we've already produced for you. Yeah. And then in that, like the natural segue is to say like, well, we can help you, you know, strategy and, or it's time, you know, to do another video that's going to help you, you know, in this area of yeah. the campaign that you're, you're working on. Yeah, no, I think that's uh, that's super smart. You should, we should always be following up, uh, you know, within those periods. Um, one, one other idea for you just came to mind as you were talking through that is Please. Um, a great place to draw some inspiration from is, you know, going to that company's, you know, assuming they have one, they, they may have like a blog or a resource center, again, where there are topics they've been talking about typically in mm -hmm. written form or guides or PDFs. And I often encourage businesses to start there when they're thinking about, okay, where should I go with video next? Well, video, one of video's you know, greatest superpowers is its ability to educate people, right? Like there's the emotion and there's the engagement and all that, but the educational nature of video is so important. And most companies you go to, at least in sort of the B2B world, you'll go to their website, you'll go to their resource center or their blog, and it is all static written content. Oh, yeah. It's PDFs. And the videos are just recorded on-demand webinars that nobody is going right. to sit through. They're going to they're gonna put that on when they need a good nap, right? So that's actually a really good place to start. You could like go to somebody, you know, go to one of your clients, you know, blogs, um, pull up the blog on the screen, make a quick Vidyard video using our recording tool if you want, shameless plug, um, where you're like, you're up on screen and you're like, hey, I noticed you've got this really great article or ebook on this one topic. I've got some ideas about how we could bring that topic to life in a video or in a short series, in a three-part series or something. We'd love to talk to you about that because I think it could be a really great opportunity because they often don't even think about that. They're like, oh yeah, topic X, we have a great blog for that, done. And it's like, mm -hmm. no, because 80% of your audience aren't reading that blog because they don't want to read blogs. And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and also the blog does very little to actually create that real connection with the people out there. It's a great SEO tool to get inbound yeah, traffic. Yeah. But you know, then if you had like a video series peeling that topic back, walking through it visually, having real people on camera, like the response to that can be totally different. But most marketers just don't think about that today, at least yeah. in the B2B world. So that's another place to start, like see what they've done already and go, we could tell this story in video. Let's talk about it. Yeah. 
I love that. That's really good. Tyler, I, can you just talk a little bit about Vidyard and, and explain to people uh, what what kind of value they could get if they if they were to use a service like Vidyard? Oh, geez, don't make me do this. Come on now. I don't want to. No? Just okay, don't be that well. guy. I, <laughs> no, I, I, sir, I, I have, uh, I've been on a couple of uh, live streams that have been that that have used Streamyard. Uh, the software is amazing. It's clean. It's beautiful. The branding, the value that you guys create, I think it is really good. So there's part of me that's like fanboying that, like we're getting. Spent all right, some time all right, together. all right, so all right. I'll give you, you a, please, I'll give you a little yes, bit. I'll give you a you. little bit. Twist your arm. There's, uh, so uh, there, there's actually two kind of main parts to what we do. One is we are a full video hosting management publishing platform um so you know there's you can use youtube to host your videos you put on your website you can use vimeo um we are a, a, a platform much more designed for modern businesses so we're a full video content management system we have our own player for publishing the videos and one of our real sweet spots is in b2b companies where they want to be able to track a lot more data behind the scenes not just on views and engagement but you know, being able to map and know, okay, who's actually watching these videos? How long are they engaging in that content? And can we use it as part of our lead qualification or for our ROI reporting to know like, hey, all these great things happen, but I can actually prove that this video helped to drive three closed deals, right? Um, so, so we do some things there. We're able to map like who's watching to your, your lead records on the back end. Um, so that's a really nice piece to it uh, for, for, for uh, B2B businesses. Um, so there's that half of it. And then our other half is we have tools that make it really easy for anyone to record and send custom videos. We have a Chrome plugin. We have a desktop app. Um, so anybody out there today, you could actually use Vidyard if you wanted to, to send video messages to your prospects, to your clients. Um, just sign up and record a webcam video, screen share video, and, and we make it really easy to just send that off over email. You don't even have to break out that beautiful DSLR camera. You can just use your webcam and have at it. That's great. So thank you for sharing that because honestly, like in the work that I've done, creating video messages, sending those via email, uh, working, you know, with my team, creating a little, you know, tutorial on screen tutorial, yeah. like all that stuff is so stinking helpful and handy. So I'm glad uh, for people to have a resource like that. And then also like one of the things that I was first introduced to uh, when when I was first introduced to Vidyard forever ago, to see the the analytics and the statistics and the in the way to measure mm -hmm. ROI, I mean that's really just beneficial for us when people use platforms like that because they can see like wow somebody has rewatched yeah. this part of our video multiple times. What is in that? What did the what did the guys at Tell Studios do right here? So uh, you know people can just put their stuff on YouTube and see how many views they get, which is fine for a certain you know use, yeah. but uh, in other uses, it really is important to be able to to see what kind of traction, what kind of engagement uh, your videos are getting. So yeah. that's that's why I mean I really want people to know that there are services like Vidyard out there that do. Yeah, that. yeah. Well, and one of the um, uh, I swear I don't want to talk about Vidyard, but one of the really cool things <laughs> You're like in one of the well, th this is not. actually just, this is just an interesting thing, <laughs> even just from like a market kind of trends perspective for technology for those that want to geek out on the tech is that. Um, one of the one of the big things we did, and, and some of our competitors do this as well now today. We're not the only ones, but the the focus on like a part of the analytics was also to, as I alluded to, be able to know, okay, who's watching this video, how long are they engaging, and use that data on the back end. And so the, the reason for that is a lot of these businesses today, they will be publishing, you know, yeah, guides and ebooks and sending out emails and stuff like that. And they're tracking on the back end, okay. Did somebody who downloaded this ebook, right? And if they downloaded that ebook, they get a certain score. And then they get, once they get enough points, they get flipped over to their sales team. And the problem that a lot of people actually face today is that, okay, I know how to track if somebody downloaded my ebook. And I know how to track if they clicked on and opened my email because the tools are there to do right. that. And I know to track if they filled out this form over here. But I don't, I'm not able to track if they watch a video. And so my models kind of break. So I'm not gonna do as much video because yeah, I just, I, my models break. Um, so that was actually one of the areas that we, we were really passionate about filling. And so now there's this sort of idea of like, hey, yeah, if somebody is a known prospect and they come to my website and they watch my you know, five minute product demo, I'll actually know that. And I can set up triggers to say, if they watch less than half of it, then do this. But if they watch more than half of it, 
you know, send a flag to my product or my, my sales team right away for them to call that person because they're a hot lead, right? And so it's actually kind of cool to see like some of that engagement data and it's happening in the real world. Like a lot of companies are doing that now where they're, they're saying like, yep, if somebody watches this much of this video, trigger an action to the sales team to, you know, do something. Um, so it, it's neat to see that actually happening in practice now as, as, as all this tech evolves. Ladies and gentlemen, you just witnessed the most subtle sales tactic uh, and it only costs twelve ninety nine a month. Uh, <laughs> enter discount code Tyler podcast to get ten percent off this month only. Oh my gosh, Tyler, this is super fun, man. We could totally nerd out for much longer, but uh, you know, you you've got other fish to fry. I am so grateful that we got to spend this time together. Where can people follow along? Keep in touch with all the cool stuff. Get the book. Blah blah blah. Yeah, just follow me. Connect with me on LinkedIn. That's my uh, that's my place. Uh, so connect with me there. If you have any questions, you want to continue any of these conversations, all of you listening, just hit me up there. I love to chat about this stuff. Um, so that's the best place to connect with me. Uh, obviously you can learn more about Vidyard on our website. And you mentioned earlier that I also host and run the Video and Business Awards, which is an annual awards program that celebrates companies doing awesome things with video. So if you happen to be listening to this before December 21st, 2021, I, I, I hope this got published before then. Uh, if you have clients who have done great things with video, go to search Vidyard Video and Business Awards and you can uh, submit them or they can apply themselves and they just might win an award for doing awesome things with video, which will of course get you more business in the end. So check that out. And if it's after December 21st, we'll be doing it again next year, don't worry. That's right. Awesome. <laughs> Tyler, again, thank you so much, man. Uh, really, really appreciate your insight. Thank you for the book. Uh, well, I mean, I bought it, but thank you for writing the book. Um, and uh, hope, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll connect again awesome. real soon. Wonderful. Well, thanks for having me. Friend, thank you for hanging out on this episode. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube, leave a comment. Let me know what your big takeaway is. Uh, how are you going to apply the info that Tyler and or I shared uh, on this show? Um, also, if you want access to some of the links and the things that we talk about, you can get access to those in the show notes, which wherever you're watching this, uh, you should be able to access those. Don't forget the five-day Grow Your Video Business Challenge starts soon. Go register for that at studiosherpas.com slash challenge. Don't wait for the next challenge. Uh, I'm, I'm serious. Like, if you're feeling like, man, this might be something good, uh, go check it out, studiosherpas.com slash challenge. And you can follow us at Grow Your Video Business on Instagram or at Ryan Coral. That's my personal account. If you need anything in the meantime, email me, ryan at studiosherpas.com. And I hope you have an incredible week and I'll see you on next week's episode.